Hello, I'm Lee Hatcher, Director of Public Affairs for Hammond Care, continuing the Profile series, a series of conversations and some great stories of people with decades of service in our organisation. Joining us now, the General Manager of Hammond Care Residential Aged Care Services, Angela Ragers. Angela, welcome. Hi, Lee. Uh, tell us something of the family in which you grew up and what you wanted to do when you grew up. Okay, well, I grew up out in the western suburbs of Sydney. My family, my father and mother, migrated from Europe in early 70s. And I was always the kid that wanted to... I was a bit of a cheeky kid. So I got, oh, into, a, got into a bit of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and when I was growing up, I wanted to... I wanted to go to the Olympics. I wanted to be the world champion. I was an athlete. That was my thing growing up. It was all about the sport. And you did for a time. I did. I, yeah, I did judo for a lot of years and represented the country and got as close as you could ever get to an Olympics without actually going to the Olympics. Um, yeah, I went to the Commonwealth Games and it was great. Yeah. Had the time of my life. And somewhat related, that's what drew you to nursing. Yeah, sort of. Yeah. See, I had, um, I didn't know what I wanted to do for a career. I never thought about what happens after the judo finishes because that was absolutely the focus. So I tried to take what I thought at the time was a bit of an easy path where I thought if you, <laughs> if you have to go to uni, my mum was very strict. She was really all for education. And I thought, well, if I have to, be educated, I'll try and do something that I think is not too hard so I can still focus on the judo. So nursing was never something that I wanted to do or that I was passionate about. And I think a lot of people out there today would still say we can see why Angela is actually not a nurse on the floor at the moment. It's not my strength. Yeah, but you're very committed to it though. I am committed to what we do as an organisation. I'm committed to the care of people. But I know that a lot of our staff and a lot of the people that are working in the front line every day are far better than I am at being great nurses. But by 23, you're running the Meadows. Yeah. Were you growing a career? No. What I was, I guess, always happy to contribute in the best way that I could. And can I tell you, over the years, I've often been surprised by the opportunities that I've been offered and thought, I don't know whether these guys are making the right call, but I'll give it a go. And I am competitive and I do want to do well at everything I do. So if somebody says, Angela, can you? I will do whatever I think I can to make it work. There are ways in which you say you've grown up at Hammond Care. I have. How's that? Well, I have to clarify, you know, I, I started with Hammond Care when I was 12. Just make sure that we get oh, that right. in Just there. The sun okay. is right. This yes. decades thing that's <laughs> throwing around out there. <laughs> you know what, Stephen Judd said much the same. <laughs> yes. But um, I was young when I started to work for Hammond Care and I, from a job point of view, the work and places that I worked before Hammond was, you know, the local pizza shop and I was a security guard at Australia's Wonderland for one summer. And that's about it. That was the work See, experience. This is why going we do in. the profile series. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have my learn. nice brown security guard <laughs> uniform on. But you know, a lot of things in your life change over the time that I've been with Hammond Care. And the one thing that's always been a constant is you know Judd Avenue, Hammondville, and some of the key people that I've met over the years. And that ranges from you know some of the people in maintenance, the people in the kitchens, the care staff, the registered nurses, some of the managers, these are people that I've known longer than I've known a lot of other people in my life. And your life changes. So I have grown up at Hammond Care. Rosemary Bond played an yes. incredibly important part in your story, didn't she? She did. Rosemary Bond interviewed me and didn't know that I was coming because it was one of those days where, you know, I pulled the ad out of the local paper and said, oh, "I'll give this Hammond Care place a go." And at the, time it was called, at the time it was called Hammondville Pioneer Homes or something along those lines. It wasn't Hammond Care yet. And Rosemary Bond was the Director of Nursing. And I turned up and she sort of went, oh no, I wasn't expecting to do an interview because the guy that was supposed to be interviewing me between Friday and Monday when I turned up wasn't there. So she gave me a go. And then from there, really taught me a lot about what are the foundations of, particularly the dementia care model of care. How did it start? What was the thinking behind the Meadows? And so when I took on the role at the Meadows, 
had, you know, a mentor that I, it was really hard to get it wrong because she knew in and out what it was supposed to be. And she taught me. How did she know? Well, it was her baby. You know, she, Rosemary Bond was the person who decided well ahead of the industry, well ahead of the time that people with dementia needed something different. It wasn't, you know, so Sinclair Nursing Home, Rosemary had thought through that being a dementia specific nursing home well before anybody else was thinking what does dementia specific mean. And it wasn't purpose built, but it was still looking at what we could do better to provide care for people with dementia and then carrying that through to the concept, the design. And she wasn't on her own, I understand that. It was a team of people, but she was the person who was leading Hammondville. So we take this model of care for granted today, but it wasn't always a given. From how I've viewed it, it seems like what, what you did, what Rosemary did was, was look at these people and listen to them and then act accordingly. Yeah, but also Rosemary has a very long and distinguished history as a nurse. Came to Hammond Care as a nurse who had worked in the acute sector and done a lot of things. She was a, she was a, a really good nurse, but what she wasn't was an institutional thinker. And that's some of the things that we still today have to battle as nurses. And that's, you know, it's a, it's a collective thing that I say, it's not just Hammond Care's nurses, it's nurses generally. We're taught to think about things happening at a certain time and taught to sort of think about people are here for our care. And Rosemary saw the flip side of it, where people are here in our care, yes, but the people are people. And what we have to do is provide them with their personhood first, and then the care will come. We could talk for hours about oh, the yeah. myriad numbers of stories. <laughs> You'd love it. <laughs> myriad numbers of stories in your time at Hammond Care. I want to just ask you about one, the prune story. Tell us about that one. Oh, can I tell you? See, one of the beautiful things about my time with Hammond Care is I've had a chance at doing pretty much everything. And, you know, from working in the laundry to maintenance and to the kitchen. And one of the things that we used to do back in the old days, again, remember I started when I was 12, uh, was we used to drive food from the main kitchen at Hammondville around the back of Sinclair to deliver food for Sinclair Nursing Home. And myself and a colleague manager at the time thought, yeah, this isn't right. There's got to be something about this that's not quite right. But you know when people tell you, oh, no, it works like this, oh, you couldn't do that. My view was always the only way I'm going to know how it works is to go and do it myself. <laughs> and so we, great managers that we were, went and got the van and went to pick up the food and driving that food and screeching around the corner, because you know, as you do. <laughs> as you do. As I do. <laughs> Learned a valuable lesson that day though, <laughs> when all the pureed prunes came flying over the back seat <laughs> and literally covered head to toe in prunes. And I'm sure there are some staff out there in, who still work with us who would remember that. And I didn't remember it fondly and had to scrape the prunes out of the van. I want to see the pictures. I want to see yeah. <laughs> People were scared of me. I was like, no photos. <laughs> You've also been known to pull shifts on the floor when yeah. the staff's short. Well, again, like I said, how do I know what I think I know unless I go out there and do it? And, I, you know, back in the days, Meadows, I mean, I've done shifts in Bond House, obviously, Sinclair, Meadows, Erinar, you know, around the traps. And... It, for me, always was grounding. It grounded me back into what we do and why we do it and gave me that seeing the care workers and I'm in awe of what they do and they are absolutely phenomenal and I've got a pretty good relationship with a lot of the care workers out there so they felt pretty comfortable to say to me, you know what, you're actually pretty ordinary at this care worker thing. So, you know, I burnt the carrots. I was supposed to, well, it's this multitasking, got to cook the carrots, got to help. Yeah, funny about that. Got to help yes. one of the residents in the shower and you're sort of running between a million things and cooking's never been my strength. Let me ask you this. If your job ended tomorrow, what, what would you do? What do you think you'd do? I think first thing I would do is, I would say, is there another way that I can contribute within Hammond Care? I've, I believe in what we do. I believe that doesn't matter what your job is or where you sit, if you're turning up for the right reason, then there's a way that I'll be able to continue to contribute. And if that's out on the floor, very happy to do that, even though I think, you know, as a nurse, not that great. But if it is, you know, working in the laundry, in the kitchen, in, I was gonna say maintenance, but I think Michael Cooney would probably have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I would do what 
I like to work in a place where I believe in it and can make a difference. Let me throw one quote of yours back at you. Most places couldn't handle Angela. Why not? And how come Hammond Care can? That's a so really far. good, can I tell you, a really, really good question. Yes. That's been one of the things, again, that I've loved about Hammond Care is I've always been able to be me. And by being able to be me, that's warts and all. You know, I'm not known for my, I'm not known for my diplomacy all the time. I've been enabled to take some of those risks for people whose lives are at risk in some of the models of care that we've decided. Some of the things, you know, where we look at some of our, uh, our special care program or our younger onset dementia cottage or our palliative care suites. These are all things that are only able to be done because of the leadership of Hammond Care that allows people like me to get on with it and do it. But I've also been allowed to challenge and question and have an opinion, even though it may not be popular. And I think from my conversations with a lot of other, and not just aged care providers, but organisations generally, there are, you know, you've got to probably, probably have to control yourself a little bit more. And <laughs> <laughs> so it's always been very liberating to work in an organisation that likes me for who I am. Tell us what your staff means to you, Angela. Look, like I said, there, we've got fantastic people doing fantastic stuff every day. And I think our biggest risk is not just taking for granted our model of care, but it's taking for granted that the people who bring that model of care to life are the people who are out there in the front line every day. And I've seen what they can do and I know how much we ask of them because we're an organisation that sets a pretty high bar. And I think it's, it's the people that we've got out there are passionate. You know, we see that in the results of our surveys and when you have conversations and people believe in what we do and I think we have to make sure that we keep giving those staff the opportunities to do what I've been able to do, to question, to challenge, to be, you know, in a place where they believe in what they do but they're respected for who they are. I ask the same two questions of each person in the profile series. First of all, yep. what gets you out of bed? in the yeah, morning to uh, come actually to... Actually, my five-year-old. <laughs> yeah, that'd be right. <laughs> but apart from that, to come to work. Well, I think, see, now it's, it's kind of... In, I'm hardwired now to be a part of Hammond Care. It's a... I don't know how to answer that except to say I love what I do. You know, not every day. I'd be lying if I said every day was, you know, I'm buzzing to get out of bed and come to work. There are some days where I think, yeah, I couldn't, wouldn't mind a bed day. Um, but I still believe in what we do and I still think there's stuff I can do. I think that's the, the big thing. If I looked and thought, okay, really not able to influence anymore or my opinion's outdated or, you know, whatever we're doing, I'm not, I, I'm bored of it, then couldn't get out of bed to come and do it. But I love it. I love what I do. And the people that I do it with. What floats your boat outside of work? I've been known to engage in a game of soccer or two. <laughs> like to still keep doing just bits and pieces because I'm like a bit of a, you know, it's the Energizer bunny thing. There's always got to be something going on. <laughs> Not a sit still kind of person. Yeah. Um, look, spending time with my son, we have a great time and he's now at that age where my mother said to me, you know, all those things you did when you were a kid, watch them come back at you. It's starting to take shape now. Um, I just, you know, I'm content with the simple things in life. I've never been a want for anything happy with my life, happy with what I do, and really happy with my job. Angela Ragas, thanks so much. You didn't want to do this, did you? No. Well, I'm glad you have. <laughs> I'm glad you have. Thanks so much. Thanks, Lee.